What's up, aliens? It's Big Al. Welcome to another Dumb Sports Vlog. Now we know why Eric Bieniemy can't get a freaking job. Because Bruce Arians and Todd Bowles and the Chiefs, free, or the freaking Buccaneers, shut them down. Completely shut them down. Dominated the game. Kansas City offense was freaking suspect, man. Just a liability all night. Just as suspicious, man. Suspicious as a freaking nun doing squats in a cucumber field. Just ridiculous, man. The the freaking pass rush of of Tampa Bay was insane. In Mahomes' face all night. Mahomes obviously didn't have his starting two tackles. That hurt. That hurt so bad. The Chiefs line looked like a bunch of freaking toddlers trying to stop a Formula One car. Dude, that shit was bad. It was bad. Tampa Bay deserved every bit of this win. I picked against them the last freaking three games of the season. I had the Saints beating him. I had the Pan uh, Packers beating him. And I had the freaking... Chiefs destroying them by 12 points. I was wrong about the whole time. They took it all the way. Man, let's talk about what we think went right and what we think went wrong and what was bullshit. Levante David shut down Kelsey on some big drives, some big third downs. Kelsey's that, that check down when they go to, um, when they need it on third down or fourth and short. Levante David played amazing coverage on Kelsey for some of those clutch uh, moments in the game. I mean, Levante David's old, and Kelsey's one of the best, or the best tight end of the game. And you got this guy that came out and shut him down at a linebacker position. Usually you try to put your best safety on, on a really good tight end, but shut him down on a linebacker spot. He still had a good game, but nowhere near as he could have. And then he had a, drop, a big drop pass on third down. That hurt him bad. Let's talk about the colossal bullshit that was the officiating of the first half. Not so much the second half, but the first half was just terrible. Tyron Matthew should have had that pick. They call it back on a bullshit um, holding or a pass interference or something, man. Offsides on the field goal. They called the offsides on the field goal. That's fine. He lined up offsides. But then literally the next uh, Tampa Bay play or the next defensive series for Tampa Bay, they had two guys lined up offsides. Their D-tackle and their defensive end were obviously lined up offsides. No one seemed to give a shit about it. Um, just... P.I. after P.I. after P.I. holding. Everything just went and went against the Chiefs, and at least three of those calls were bullshit. The one I'll, I'll admit, um, Tyron Matthew the in the end zone, the pass interference in the end zone, I I agree with that call. But there were so many, like, are we going to let the boys play or are we just going to let it be a bunch of freaking flags being thrown everywhere? Everyone makes it think, it just makes it look like the game is rigged. It makes it look like Tom Brady was destined to win. Just... I mean, anytime anything positive happened for the Chiefs' defense, they, they got a flag thrown and the drive kept going, especially right before halftime, and then they went down freaking big at halftime. Stupid, man. You never want to say the refs win or lose a game, but, I mean, that they weren't coming back after that first half. That was insane. Chiefs receivers dropped a few balls. Um, definitely nowhere near a good game for anybody on the Chiefs. I mean, everyone had a, a shitty, shitty game. Um drop passes. Mahomes was running for his life all day. Straight up Forrest Gump running. I just felt like running. Just running for his life. Every play he was making these insane throws and bouncing off Tyreek Hill's face mask. A bunch of dumb crap. Patrick Mahomes was running like a gay fat kid at a hot dog eating contest, man. It was... <sighs> I felt bad for him at one point. And I talked about my video um, the other day, my preview, I talked about how Mahomes was the guy that would extend the plays and start playing schoolyard ball, and he did. He was hitting dudes in the face, freaking. There was one throw, he was like diving parallel to the ground, literally parallel to the ground, chucks it up, and it's a catchable ball, but they don't come down with it. Fail for Patrick Mahomes. He got, <laughs> he got obliterated all game. I don't want to see Tom Brady win another freaking Super Bowl, man. I follow Giselle on Instagram, so now I gotta go on Instagram and watch Giselle post this freaking long ass Portuguese freaking Instagram post about how she's proud of uh, freaking Tom Brady, and I gotta translate that shit and read it. And I gotta see him and his supermodel wife and his freaking kids, and man, seven rings. Tom Brady has more Super Bowl rings than any NFL franchise. Baffling. That wouldn't happen for any other sport. The Celtics have, what, 17, 18 rings? The Yankees have 27 rings. Tom Brady has seven rings, and the two, three franchises that have six, you got, um, or no, two franchises have six, two have five. You got Steelers at six, Patriots at six, 
Um, Cowboys at five, Niners at five. Tom Brady has seven by himself. I mean, you got to applaud a great career. All I've known is freaking Tom Brady. I started watching football probably like the year before the Steelers won in 2005. Brady had already won two Super Bowls by then. Like, all I've known is Tom Brady going to AFC Championship games and every freaking playoff game has to go through New England and all this bullshit and 10 Super Bowls. I mean, we're in the... This is our Michael Jordan of football. Like, we, I spent all these years hating the guy, but congratulations to Tom Brady. Seven rings is insane. I mean, they, they cracked the code. They got freaking... They know that if you want to win now, you got to sell out and you got to get people there. And that's what they did. They got Brady. They got Gronk. They got AB. Um, they had guys. They had studs before. They had freaking um, Evans as an amazing receiver. Godwin's a really good receiver. They had a, a solid defense. I don't think they brought anyone in on defense. They had JPP playing unbelievable with three fingers over there. Shaq Barrett led the league in sacks a couple of years ago, I think, playing on a franchise tag, sticking around, trying to win a ring. Um, you got Vita Vea, who is a monster of a man. Vita Vea is the freaking biggest dude on the field easily. You see him running around out there pushing linemen back, pushing these toddlers around that the Chiefs put out there on their offensive line. Jesus, man. And then you got, obviously, Levante Davis, one of the best interior linebackers in the game for several years now. And then Devin White, who was the number five overall pick last year. And then and Dama Kung Su. <laughs> the, the front seven is unreal, man. They put together an amazing defense and I just heard Booger say it on, on ESPN, but they were like, I mean, it always goes back to it. Defense wins championships. I mean, you can't have an, an Oregon offense of the, the 2010s when Oregon put up 60 points a game and tried to win national championship. You can't do that in the NFL. You can't put up 60 points a game and go win a championship because there's a smart-ass defense that's going to sit there and they're going to watch you for two weeks and they're going to come out and they're going to hold Patrick Mahomes to 250 yards, an interception or two interceptions. A couple of interceptions, no touchdowns. They held the Chiefs to zero touchdowns. Zero touchdowns. That is nuts. Nine points. Man. They deserve every bit of it. They deserve every bit of it. I mean, that's all I can say. The the Bucks went out and handled business. I mean, that's, a, that's anything you'd expect from a Tom Brady team. Boring game. Boring-ass game to watch. Especially, I was rooting against the Bucks the whole time, and they got, oh, a touchdown. Oh, is Patrick Mahomes going to come back? Oh, punt. Oh, touchdown. Is Patrick Mahomes going to come back? Uh, interception. Is Patrick Mahomes going to come back? Punt. Turnover on downs. Like, they had some big plays. That, that goal line stand they had before halftime was awesome. I was like, hell yeah, the, the Chiefs got something going here. Nope. Nada. Boring-ass game. I'm trying to think of like some other boring games, like the the uh, the Patriots Rams was boring a couple years ago. Last year's game was really good because the Chiefs came back and won. I mean, just boring. Like, I guess if you're a Bucks fan, it was amazing to watch, thirty-one to nine in the Super Bowl. I mean, well done, good job, Bucks. I had a couple non-football things I wanted to go go over, talk about commercials, man. The commercials have died off the past few years, and it's been sad because they used to be funny as shit. But best commercial had to be Ashton Kutcher, Mila Kunis, and <laughs> Shaggy singing uh, It Wasn't Me when he was catching her eating the hot Cheetos. That was pretty funny. I like that one. And my honorable mention for commercials in the Super Bowl, Scientology. Scientology had a commercial, and they probably played – I don't know what, what the rate is for, for Super Bowl commercials this year. Usually it's like $5 million for a 10-second ad or whatever whatever it is. And Scientology came out here with a big old commercial. They had the two the two hand paddles. What is it? I, have, I only have one water bottle. They have the two hand paddles, and then they had like a bunch of smiling people, like different races and ethnicities. And uh, <laughs> Scientology coming out here killing it with Super Bowl commercials. <laughs> that shit killed me. I told my wife, I was like, did you see that? Did you see that? And she's like, no, it was a Scientology commercial. <laughs> oh, man, fantastic. And The weekend killed it. A lot of people said it was weird, it was whack, when he went in like that funhouse kind of light-up thing. Of course, every Super Bowl halftime show turns into a meme somehow, so that turned into the meme on Twitter. Last year was Shakira doing the uh, thing with her tongue. So, I mean, the halftime show just turns into a meme every year. Imagine if we had the internet when Justin Timberlake freaking sexually assaulted Janet Jackson. Shit would have popped off back then. All right. Football season's over. What the hell am I going to talk about? Well, that's for me to know and you guys to find out later on. 
Thanks for watching. We had a good football season. Appreciate you guys for, for watching my stuff. I try to put out some some content. I'm going to talk a lot about what I think teams can do in the offseason, what I think Steelers can do. What, I mean, we got other sports too. This is a sports vlog. It isn't just a football vlog, even though football is the best sport ever. I'll find some stuff to talk about. Probably bring my list back, my top five list. Um, if you have something you want me to rate in a top five fashion, let me know. I'll do it because I will run out of ideas fast. So thanks for watching, guys. Congrats to the Buccaneers. Football season, dunzo. Oh, best tweet of the night. I forgot to say. Best tweet of the night comes from a fake Adam Sandler account. Um, <laughs> it said uh, the Chiefs couldn't, the Chiefs, what did the, what did the Chiefs and JFK have in common? Neither of them could finish a drive. <laughs> Brutal. All right. Thanks, guys. Love always. And remember, Iowa sucks.